Fox River, how is your prayer life? You ever struggle when it comes to prayer? Like, how much should I pray? How often? Where do I pray? When do I pray? How do I start off my prayers? What's the end supposed to be like? Oh, and by the way, can you tell me a little bit about the middle too? Like, like anybody struggling? Like, what are, the, what are the words that we're actually supposed to say when we pray? Prayer can be challenging to say the very least, but prayer is really, really important. All right, prayer is how we align our hearts with God's heart. All right, prayer is how we begin. Listen, there's a process here, okay? But prayer is how we begin to, God, whatever you want done, okay? Prayer is how we begin to bring that down from heaven to earth and then put it into practice. Again, there's a process, but it begins with prayer. And prayer is one of the most significant ways that we can connect with God. Jesus, when he walked the earth for 30-something years, he connected with God, and he remained connected with God through prayer. And you and I as believers, listen, we're called to do the same. So here's the question. How do we do that? And I mean, let's narrow the focus a little bit too. Like, how do we pray, but how do we pray like Jesus? Hmm. Thankfully, his disciples were asking that same question. So we're going to dial into that. And we're going to discuss that in just a few minutes. Because today is all about this. How do we pray like Jesus? And Jesus is going to show us as we get into it. He's going to show us, hey, there are two pieces to the perfect prayer. And we're really going to want to follow Jesus' example on this one, which is he's going he's to give us, thankfully. Because if we begin to pray like Jesus, check this out. This is such good news that God has for us. If we begin to pray like Jesus, maybe, just maybe, we can start to live like him too. And that would be a really good thing. All right, so let's enter into more of what God has for us, all right? Online, North Campus, I'm talking to you right now. How many of you guys over there, man, you're just interested in having a little more joy because God has some joy for you, all right? All right, is anyone interested, I'm talking to you, Muskego, anyone interested in like sharing the good news and helping people to know God and know him more over in Muskego? Anybody interested? Okay, okay, all right? And now I'm talking to my South friends, okay? South Campus, here we are today. I'm, I'm just wondering, is anybody interested? I mean, tell me if you are. Anybody interested in glorifying God just a little bit more with your life? Anybody? Okay, me too. Me too, all right? I'm really excited. I know God's got some really good things for us, so let's approach him, right, with, with thankful hearts, but also with just open hands, ready to receive all that he has for us today, all right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. It is a gift, God. I thank you for all of us here, of course, those in our Fox River family across all of our campuses, near and far, um, but God, we also thank you for those who are here and they don't call Fox River home for whatever reason and that's totally fine. God, I pray that, that they would receive from you today too, that they would feel welcome and loved here and God, that you've got something for them. I know you have something very special for each one of us today. God, help us to hear from you in our time together here in the next few minutes. Help us to understand what you're trying to tell us and help us, God, somehow, some way, help us to respond to your good news of good grace in Jesus. God, help us to respond by following you and by following Jesus' example. In that prayer, every piece of it, and above that prayer, God, we pray this most of all, that the name of Jesus Christ would be glorified and magnified in our hearts and with how we live our lives from this point forward. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, let's turn to Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11 is where we're going today. And as we get into Luke chapter 11, you turn there in your Bible if you got it, or your digital device of choice, all right? But Luke chapter 11, here's, here's just a little bit of background. As we get into this, it's going to sound really familiar to many of us, all right? You're going to recognize this as the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and, and some of us, if you're like me, you're going to recognize it as the Our Father, okay? But you're also going to notice, hey, this is a little bit different, okay? So we're reading from Luke chapter 11 where Jesus gives the abbreviated version of this. And you and I might be more familiar with Matthew chapter 6, where he gives the full version. They're similar prayers, but why are they different? They're in two different locations on the earth. They're on two different times uh, uh, on the timeline of history, okay? So these are two separate instances. Why are they different? Here's one thing we can take away from that. It appears that, like, crowds follow Jesus and they gather to hear him teach a lot, right? It appears that prayer, this topic of prayer, this is something that Jesus taught on 
semi-frequently, all right? And we're gonna see it here in Luke chapter 11 for sure. But up until this point in Jesus' ministry, he ministered for three years. This is about the halfway point, like one and a half years in. Up until this point, even though Jesus is teaching the crowds about prayer, he never actually taught his disciples, his closest ones, his inner circle, so to say. He didn't teach them directly about prayer up until this point. But that's about to change, all right? Here we go. Luke chapter 11, we're going to start in verse number one. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place, all right? Just pause for a second. He was praying in a certain place, and the disciples saw him praying, okay? Just imagine that. Being, being the disciples, they know Jesus wakes up early in the morning to pray. Before anybody else, he wakes up and he prays. Sometimes he stays up late at night, sometimes the entire night to pray. Like, doesn't even go to bed, all right? Just prays the whole night. Jesus prays before meals. He prays before and during miracles. I mean, he's, he's praying all the time. But, but now we see him. Imagine, like, we actually see him. Now, now, when I enter into that part of my imagination, I imagine a lot if you haven't understood that about me yet. But, but, but as I enter that, I'm like, well, I wonder if he was standing. Was he standing, walking around? Was he sitting, like, on a rock or a log? Was he kneeling? Was he just flat, like, laid out, like, just prostrate on the ground before God, like, like what, what was his posture or position? I don't know. We, we don't get any of those answers. It's just fun to think about that. And I think it's a healthy thing, right, just to think about. What are some of these details? All right, anyways, all right, here we go. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. What is the, okay. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just like John the baptizer taught his disciples. The disciples literally followed Jesus around. That's what it means to be a disciple. You're a follower, you're a learner, right? So they're, they're following Jesus and they're learning from him. He's their teacher, he's their rabbi. Jesus is their savior, all right? Jesus is serving them all the time, whether they realize it or not. Jesus is always serving as well. And they wanted to be like him. Just like every Christ follower wants to be like Jesus. Which is why they said this, teach us how to pray. We want to be like you, Lord. All right, that's, that's the Bill translation. All right, let's keep reading. Verse number two. So Jesus gets that question, Lord, teach us to pray, and, and, and he answers. All right, he said to them, when you pray, say this, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Notice how Jesus begins this prayer. He's teaching them how to pray. He begins this prayer with the single word, Father, right? Jesus is demonstrating that, that God is his father, right? But when he's teaching his disciples and us, by the way, let's not forget that, he's teaching, hey, this is your, God is your father too. Now picture this. Maybe, maybe you had this growing up. This is gonna be easy for you to, to think about. Maybe, maybe you didn't have this, but just picture the perfect dad ever, all right? A dad who loves his children, a dad who cares for his children, a dad who wants his children to come to him, a, a dad who actually likes being around his kids, not just loves them, I love you, but, but like actually likes being around them, okay? This is, this is a really good dad now, okay, right? So, so it always takes time to listen, always makes time to help. See, God is someone that we can come close to. He's, he's, He's someone we can talk with. He rejoices whenever we follow him. But he never stops saying, follow me more. Right? He's always like, follow me more. All right, we're going here. Follow me this way. Well, we're going here. Follow me this way. You know? Hey, say this. Hey, do this. Like, just follow me more. We can share our joy with him when we come close. Father, you never guess what just happened. I mean, you know, you kind of know already, but, but the point of prayer is not me educating you. The point of prayer is relationships. So, like, you'll never guess what happened today. And you get to share your joy, right? Even just the, the mundane stuff, like if someone calls you and, and, and you're like five minutes in the conversation, like, why did you call? Like, what's the point? Like, you can go to God with that, okay? Just tell him about the day. And you can also go to God when you come close to him and talk with him with your struggles. Even those really deep, dark secrets, like the ones that are just really ugly. You can bring those to God. He wants you and I to do that. 
He says, cast your cares, cast your worries, cast your anxieties upon me. Like he delights in that when his children come to him. He's welcoming us. He's inviting us into closer connection. He's our father. And he's holy. That's what hallowed be your name means. He's our father and he's holy. Okay, he is, he is holy. He is separate. He is holy. He is special. We are, he is perfectly powerful. He is perfectly perfect. He is perfectly good. He's perfectly loving. We are made in his image. That's pretty exciting stuff, okay? But, but we are not fully like him. Like, like we're different, <laughs> okay? You're holy. You're perfect. I am not like that, okay? I have good moments, but they don't measure up to how good and perfect you are. He's holy, and he deserves our respect and our reverence. We come to him not because we're worthy, but because he is. We come close to God by grace. We don't deserve it. It's by grace. It's undeserved or unmerited favor. That's how we come close to him. Now, where does that grace come from? From Jesus on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, he made a way for people like us, who are not perfect, to come close to God, who is perfect. Jesus died on the cross and took care of the sin problem for everyone who believes. And now we can come close to God and have right relationship with him. Jesus made a way. Why would Jesus do such a wonderful thing for us? Because the Father so loved the world. John 3, 16. Amen? God loves us. And it's all about him. Let me prove that to you, okay? It's about his will. It's about his kingdom. It's about his glory. It's all about you, Lord. All right, let's take a quick, like, race speed, like, lap around the Bible real quick. The psalmist says it like this in Psalm 115. It says this, not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Peter writes this. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. And then Paul says it like this, the Apostle Paul, right? I mean, all these people are on the same, same page, it seems. For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever, amen. Right, you're sensing a theme here, it's all about God. Then John, John the apostle, he's like 70, 80, 90 years old, he's an old man at this point, and somehow, I don't get all the ins and outs of this, by the way, I don't fully understand it, but somehow in the spirit, he is transported into heaven, and he's in heaven, and not just heaven in general, He's in the very throne room of God. Like there's a throne in the center of this throne room and God is on it. And around him are four living creatures, some kind of angelic spiritual beings, all right? There's four creatures. And then around them, there's 24 elders, these really special people in heaven. And, and here's what John writes about in Revelation chapter number four, beginning in verse number eight. He says this, each of those four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around them, even under its wings, day and night. They never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures, those four living creatures, whenever those living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders, they fall down before him who sits on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever. And they, and they lay their crowns, like they have some these elders, the 24 really special people in heaven, they have some kind of crowns on their head. But, but as soon as those four creatures you know, say, holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Then, then they, they bow down and they take their crowns and listen, listen. They lay them on the ground before the throne. And then they say this, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Listen, it's all about 
God. No angels are going to be singing 24-7 about us. There will be no elders casting their crowns before you and I. It's all about God. And the most important thing will always be the accomplishing of his will, the advancement of his kingdom and the reception of his glory, God, that you would receive the glory that you are due. Understand, in heaven, he reigns. Whatever he wants done is done. Whatever he says, it is so. When he gives an instruction to any of his angels, they instantly obey every time. May it be like that here on the earth as well. As we gather, grow, give, and go, as God leads us to do those things, may we follow him. When God speaks, whether it's through his word or his Holy Spirit speaking to us within, whenever he speaks, may we hang on every word. And whenever we share the message of Jesus with others, may they believe it and trust in Jesus and receive him. Have your way here on the earth, Lord, just as it is in heaven. May your kingdom come, Lord, right? And may our first concern always be for God and his glory as we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and his will. That's the way Jesus lived. And that's the way Jesus prayed. And we see that coming out here. He's teaching us to do the same. If we pray like Jesus, we have a real shot to live like Jesus as well. But wait! This is a good objection. If you're thinking this, if you're feeling the tension, this is a good place to be. But wait, if you're saying my prayers need to be all about God, because it's all about God, then what about me? Like, can I pray about my life and the things going on? Like, like is it ever about me? Am I ever allowed to pray for me? Watch this. Because the first half was 100%. All about God, through and through. I hope we can all appreciate that over these past few minutes. But let's take a look at the second half now. All right, here we go. Verse number three. So Jesus starts the prayer, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. And then verse three, the second half or the second piece to that perfect prayer. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. When Jesus teaches his disciples how to pray, he says this. He wants them to start off by remembering who God is and focusing in on what does God want. Then, which is what that second half of the prayer is all about, he says continue praying by asking for God's help. Now, why do we ask for God's help? Here's a couple possible answers. Because we've got some problems down here, Lord. We need some help, right? He knows that. So that's why we ask for help. Another reason we ask for help is so that we can actually do what he wants. If we're praying his kingdom come, it's really important that maybe we could be a part of that, right? Because listen, God is advancing his kingdom. When, when we pray your kingdom come, right? your will be done on heaven as it is on earth, going back to the Lord's prayer in Matthew 6, right? As we pray that, we got to understand, he wants to advance his kingdom in us, but also through us. So how can we be a part of it? We ask for his help so that we can be a part of it. So verse 3 at that point, verse 3 is more than just, hey, give me some food so I can live. All right? Now I'm being a little bit harsh there, okay, but, but I'm trying to make a point. It's more than just, hey, it's all about me. Do I have needs? You bet I have needs. And God says, bring those to me, okay? But verse 3 is not simply, give me some food so I can live. It, it, it really is more of this, give me some food, Lord, so I can live, so I can do what you have called me to do, so I can do what you want to do. I want to be like you. I want to follow you, Lord. I want to follow Jesus' example. But if you don't give me some food or shelter or clothing or these other basic necessities or the things that I'm going through, listen, I can't do it because I'm not going to make it unless you help me. This is the part of the prayer where Jesus is telling us to pray about what's going on in our life. All right? This is the part 
of the prayer where Jesus is saying, hey, pray about your motivation. If you're in a spot right now, which many of us are, and to be totally honest, I'm not proud of this, by the way, but I fluctuate between I'm really motivated to serve you, Lord, and I'm really not. I feel like just laying on the couch all day, okay? I, I kind of fluctuate or oscillate between those two places. Maybe, maybe we're alike. But maybe praying about motivation when it comes to giving of your money, which is a tough one for most of us, all right? Or serving, all right? We heard about Amplify, Pastor Brian, a few minutes ago, right? Being a part of new volunteers coming into the kids' ministry and really helping the next generation learn about Jesus and grow in their faith. But man, I'm just kind of, I don't feel like it, you know? Pray about that, that motivation. There's an opportunity to serve God. Pray about it. That's a need that you have. This is also a time to pray about if you have mental health issues, which most of us have something when it comes to mental health issues, all right? This is a time to come to him for that. It's a time to come to him like, God, the cancer's back, and I don't know what I'm going to do. It's not looking good, and I don't know if I'm going to make it. God, give me the grace I need to get through this. Because I don't know how to make it all about you right now. I'm just kind of stuck on me. Help me to pray like Jesus. Help me to get better. I need your help. Whatever those needs are, pray about them. And another need Jesus brings up in chapter, or verse number four. Right? It's not simply forgive me so I can go to heaven, which is what I thought forgiveness was all about for a lot of years. It's actually forgive me, Lord, because... My sin is creating a barrier or a barricade between me and you. And if there's something between us, this sin problem, even as believers we sin, there's sin between us. We're not connected in the right way. Our relationship isn't right like it should be. And if, if, if we're not together, if you're not with me, Lord, I, I can't do what you're calling me to do. Like I, I really, really need your forgiveness. I want to do great things for you, Jesus. But I can't if sin is in the way. Now, not only do we need God's help after we sin, right? We're just talking about forgiveness. But we also need God's help beforehand, too. In Hebrew culture, all right, which is the time all this is taking place in Israel, right? In Hebrew culture, test and temptation, they're super similar. Okay. In Hebrew language, they're actually the same word, naka. All right, naka. Somebody said, "Bless you." No, I didn't. That's the word, naka. Okay, so it's naka. And the idea when Jesus says, "Hey, lead us not into temptation," the idea is this: that in life's trials and tribulations, which are tests, by the way. Right? Any, anybody got trial, tribulation, tests in your life? Anybody got problems? Or like, I mean, just help me out. I mean, every hand should be up at this point. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, life is just a mess, okay? And sometimes it's a hot mess, right? So it's, it's Jesus is saying, hey, in, in, those, in life's trials, in life's tribulations, in life's tests, it's like you want to do good. You want to please God. May you do well in those tests of life that they wouldn't become temptations that you fail in. God, help us to be victorious like Jesus. Help us to become more like him and to live like him too. So in this short prayer, here's what we see. Jesus giving his disciples and us a model for prayer, right? A template for prayer. Jesus didn't give it in a way, I was taught this growing up, by the way. This is something you need to remember and recite and repeat word for word. And I actually got quizzed on it. Like I would sit in the chair, I remember, anyways. So it's like, Jesus, listen, it's not wrong to do that, by the way, okay? I still do that. I still say the Our Father, okay, the, the Lord's Prayer. There's nothing wrong with that. I think God is pleased by that. It's a beautiful prayer, obviously. It's just not what Jesus meant. He was giving us a framework. That, that's, and there's those two pieces to the perfect prayer, right? The first half, it's all about God, all right? He's our Father. He's holy, all right? We want His will to be done because it's all about you, Lord. May your kingdom come. That's the first half. And the second half is this What are our needs? 
Give me everything I need so that I can follow you, Lord. Give me everything I need so I can be a part of your kingdom coming to the earth. Give me everything I need to follow Jesus' example. So, what are the things that you need? Jesus is saying, hey, talk to God about that. What are the things that you need so that you can follow God more? Do you need more money? Do you need more food? Do you need shelter? Do you need clothing? Do you need these basic things? Do you need something to be fixed in here? Do you need forgiveness? In life's tests, do you need it to be tests and not become temptations that maybe you fail in? All right, listen, it takes a humble person to say the truth. I'm weak, and if you don't help me, Lord, I'm not going to make it through this one. I'm going to really screw up. I've done it a million times before, and I see it coming again. God, help me. Come to him in humility. That's, that's, if that's what you need, just like that's what you need, voice it to God. He's like, bring it. If you got needs, pray to Jesus about them. Ask him for help. If you pray like Jesus, you can live like Jesus. You can follow his example. And if you pray to him, here's just the bill. I mean, let's cut through all this. There's a lot of words going on around. Let's cut through it. If you pray to God, he will hear you. Like God will hear you. Watch this. Verse number five. Jesus they're like, how do we pray? Jesus tells them, and then right away, right after he's done saying, this is how you pray, he goes into this, verse number five. Then Jesus said to him, hey, suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight, and you say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread, like in the middle of the night, okay? A friend, a different friend of mine, he's on a journey, and he's come to me, like just a few minutes ago, and I have no food to offer him. I gotta be hospitable, and I just, I wasn't prepared. I didn't know he was coming. And suppose the friend inside the house who you just woke up says, don't bother me. The door is already locked. It's the middle of the night and my children are in bed. I can't get up right now and give you anything. Are you crazy? Why are you knocking on my door right now? Get out of here. Jesus continues. He says, I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, you guys are friends, but that's not why he's going to help you. Yet because of your shameless audacity, the fact that you went over to his house in the middle of the night and you knocked on the door and he didn't answer and you're like, I know know he's in there and you just kept knocking. And then he's like, what's going on? Hey, I need something. No, man, I'm sleeping. We're all in bed. And you're like, I'm not, I'm just keep knocking. And finally, he's so annoyed because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Listen, even when friendship fails, a person receives bread because of their boldness. Now, how much better is God than that cranky neighbor friend? Wait, don't answer. Jesus says, I'll tell you. Okay, here we go. Keep reading. Verse number nine. So I say to you, Jesus is talking. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, God receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. How much better is God? He is way better. If you ask anything of God and you're praying in his name, he's gonna answer that prayer every time. Do we get it now? We're starting to get this. And Jesus is like, listen, as we're beginning to say, yes, I think I get it. He's like, no, you don't. And he keeps going, all right? He's like, I told you about the cranky neighbor, friend. And now we're going to talk about another one, the father. Okay, watch this. Which of you as fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? I don't know. I wouldn't do that, okay? Or if he asks for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? No, I would never do that. If you then, though you are evil compared to God, God is holy and perfect and and, and we're not, right? So it's comparative that Jesus is saying here. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? See, Jesus is trying to tell us something really, really important here. God is better. 
than your cranky neighbor friend. Your father in heaven is better than the best father here on the earth. If you are seeking God and putting him first in your life, if you are trying your best to follow Jesus, as flawed as that effort might be, okay? We're, we're, we're similar in that department. Listen, but if you're putting God's first and you're seeking him and you're trying to follow Jesus' example, don't give up. Do not give up. Keep praying. Because he hears you. God hears you. And your Father, who art in heaven and who is holy, he will answer you. Just don't give up. Listen, I've been a Christian for 26 years. Guess how long I've been praying for some of my family members to receive Jesus as Savior? Take a guess. 26 years. That's exactly right. I don't know when, but hear me when I say, I know God's going to answer that prayer. How do you know that, Bill? That's quite the claim. Because Jesus says so here in Luke chapter 11. I'm not saying it makes sense. Believe me, I'm not saying it makes sense. But Jesus says so. When we pray according to his will, when we're persistent, when we're bold. I mean, this approach works with people. God's like, it for sure works when it comes to you praying to me. Just don't give up. This is in his will for him to answer those prayers that we're praying, that he would love just like we would, that he would delight in if they were answered with a yes. And he's using us. He's using our prayers. He's using our words. He's using our actions to accomplish his will here on the earth. So when we invite people to church, we can say with confidence, yeah, God wants that too. When we invite people to back to school blessing weekend, two weeks from now, we can be confident, okay, God wants that too. So we can pray that with confidence and even with this expectation, you know what, God might answer that this year. He might do it. So we pray. What are those good and godly things that you would like to see and God would like to see happen here on the earth in this life? Pray about those things and don't give up. May his kingdom come. May his will be done on earth as it is in heaven in us, but also through us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Jesus, thank you for teaching us how to pray. Help us to pray like you, Lord, so that we might live like you as well. You've given us so much, Lord, so much. And we put you first. God, that's the attitude of our hearts. We're putting you first. Help that to translate into our actions as well. God, that we, as you would give to us and you did, God, that we would give everything to you, Lord. That you would receive the praise, the honor, and the glory you so deserve. May you advance your kingdom. May you build your kingdom in us, but also through us, we pray. For those who not yet received Jesus, Right, we're talking all about Father. But if we're just like totally blunt and honest, he's not your father because you've never received him as such. Today's your day. If you're still in need of forgiveness, if you're still in need of the joy that we talked about earlier, if you're still in need of hope and a purpose for your life, Today is the day because you can receive those things from your Father in heaven who loves you. Say yes to God and receive Jesus today. Enter into more of the fullness that he has for you. For those reaching out to Jesus for the first time, we pray this prayer of salvation today. I'm sorry, Lord, for sinning against you. I need your forgiveness and I need your grace. I believe, Lord Jesus, that you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe, Jesus, that three days later, you rose from the grave for my life. I'm trusting in you, Lord, and in you alone. I'm not trusting in me or anything else. I'm done with that. I'm trusting in you alone, Lord, to save me and to make me new. I receive you, Jesus, right here, right now. Thank you. Help me to live my life for you. If there's anybody here that has received Jesus or anybody at any of our campuses who has received Jesus today, I wanna to ask you to do something. Would you raise your hand and just let me know with eyes still closed, head still bowed, thank you, Lord. 
Anybody else? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. You're so good. Father, be glorified, Lord, this week as we choose to pray like you, but also as we choose to live like you as well. Amen.